Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just want to give her a quick video, just running through, investigating and fixing a fault on this 2016 Ford Ranger. This one's a 3.2 wild track. Basically, we've got the engine warning light on. We've plugged it in with the top down diagnostic machine and running through the codes in a minute. We've cleared the fault code out. As soon as you strike it up and have it running again, the light comes immediately back on and the fault code's back as well. And just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. Uh, basically we've done a full full code scan the top down diagnostic machine and just on here we've got some fault codes in the engine control module now there is some glow plug codes in this one they've been in it for a little while it does need some glow plugs but it's not relating to the issue that we're looking at today basically the fault that we're looking at is this p242d which relates to the exhaust gas temp sensor and it's bank one which is a five cylinder it's only got one bank sensor three which sensor three is normally the rearmost one in the it should just be towards the back of the dpf i believe it is so, but once we get it up in the air we'll just show you where the sensor is located as well um but just to sort of check what the sensor is doing at the minute we'll just go into the data in the ecu as well i've just been into it before but i'll just show you what it's actually reading i'll just to narrow it down because you can see on there we've got 404 different readings so i'm just going to narrow it down So if we go to exhaust gas temp, this is where we searched before. We've got six different ones on there, all relating to that. So we'll go into that. Now you can just see on there, I wasn't quite sure which one it was. That's why I selected them all to start with. But you can see it sort of calls it 11, 12 and 13, which it must be bank one and then sensor one, sensor two and sensor three, all on the same bank. So you can see sensor three there, which is the rearmost one. So the other two are reading 65 degrees. And we've just got like a like a default setting it'll be just set it at a thousand degrees which is obviously miles out so all we're going to do now is just get it up in the air just have a look at the temp sensor and just see what we found the issue to be now just coming up from underneath i found the fault really easy on this one i'll just run you through a few bits quickly and where some of the sensors are located um but just before i show you the fault but this is a dpf at the front there and if you just look up there just in the little gap there you can just see that blue wire that's going to temp sensor one. There's another sensor just in the middle, which you can just see. Let's try focusing on it, but just through there. That's temp sensor two, sort of in the middle. And then temp sensor three is just this one that's located at the back there, just before the flexi piece. Now, these temp sensors can be quite common. To start with, I always just have a quick look at the wiring harness, just to make sure I can't see any obvious things. And that's where we've come across the issue. Now, if I can find a wiring diagram, I'll just overlay that and just put a bit of information in it as well in case it helps anyone. But I'll just show you where we found the fault to be on this one to start with. Um, but just looking at the wiring for it, there's quite a long piece of, of loom that comes with the sensor, but basically runs down the back along the gearbox there. It comes up and over this sort of subframe section there, just comes round to the plug there. And as soon as I've looked at the plug, you can just see one of the wires, just try to focus on that, has just rotted off and just comes straight out of the plug there. So it's really easy to find. And all we're going to do with this now is obviously this is on the, there's actual, the actual wire from the sensor. Just try to focus on that again. Um, so it's on the, it's not on the sensor side, it's on the actual engine harness side. And Ford don't do any repair plugs. If I do find a repair plug, I'll put a link to it in the description below if there's any aftermarket ones that I can find. Now you could find like a generic waterproof plug that you could um, just cut there and cut there and join it up. But all I'm going to look to do to start with, and there is obviously the option to hardwire it and just join the two together as well. Um, we're just going to have a look into it now and just see what we can do. We'll just separate the plug, see if I can get the pin out, see if I can do anything with it if I've got any spare pins, and just see what the best attempt to do is on repairing it. So we'll get it repaired to start with, and then check the data reading in the car and see if it's reading okay, then we know it's going to fix the fault. So we'll just have a crack of that now and see what we can do.
Right, so we've managed to clean that up there, just strip back the wire a bit, just get it re-soldered on there and just put the sleeve back over it and it's not the best repair but it's the best I'm going to sort of do with, it, do with it today without having a new actual solder, a new terminal piece there. So all I'm going to do is just refit it, get it all back on and I'm just going to just dab a little bit of silicon in just on the end just to help protect it as well. Obviously there's a bit of exposed wire in there. Um, sometimes I carry it with a bit of nail varnish, that seems to do the job quite well. I might do that and just put a little bit of silicon just over the top as well. I think it looks like it's a little bit bare just in there, so we'll just do that after as well. But we'll just get it all back together just to get the pin out. Basically, you have to take the little white sleeving off, take the actual rubber off, and then you can just get in just on the bottom side of the pin, just where the little spring tab is, which is just that little piece just there. And then it just, um, you can just flick it and then just push it back to get it out. So. So we've now got the connector all sealed back up, just pop back up into place. And so just dabbed a bit of silicon on there. Now the silicon does look a little bit rough. I'd prefer to get a neater repair on there. Um, but just for now, the main purpose of the silicon is just to protect that little bit of bad wire and it will just help it. What I'll probably do in the future is just look for an actual proper repair, repair plug if I can get one. Uh, but we'll see how this hangs out for now. Um, but we'll just drop it back down, look at the reading, clear the fault code and make sure everything's okay. Right, so we just hopped straight back in the vehicle. I haven't actually cleared any fault codes or anything yet, but I just went straight to the temperature sensor just to see what it was reading. Now you can see that temp sensor 3 is now reading 15 degrees, which is a realistic reading. Um, the other two are reading 65, which is a little bit odd because um, it's been left right cool down now, so they should actually be the same really, but it might be something to do with the set on the default because um, I haven't cleared the fault code, doesn't know it's been run or anything yet. So all we're going to do now, just drag it up, see what the read wants it's running. Um, but I'll just clear the fault code, give it a quick run, just make sure the light stays out as well, and we'll just update you after that. And just see if we've got it running, it is actually adjusting, so it's definitely working and reading. But yeah, we'll just clear the fault code now and just give it a quick, quick run and just see where we go from there. Right, so we've just been around the block, just give it a quick spin, it's running absolutely spot on now, no engine warning light on. As I said before, the engine warning light comes straight on before. We've just done a full scan with the diagnostic machine again. Now we've still got some faults in the engine control module, um, but as I said before, we've got the glow plug faults. We need, it does need a set of glow plugs, I know about that. But the fault with the temp sensor has gone now, and if we just go and look at the data now, we'll just see what it says on the temp sensor reading. 
I can say now, now that we're on the temperature reading, they're all there or thereabouts the same. Obviously, them temp sensors are pretty close, but you can say they're all near enough to flick in between 155 degrees. Obviously, the uh, front one there is a little bit cooler. Um, but you can see they're all reading bang on now, so it's definitely fixed the problem. It's not to say this is always going to be the problem with this fault code. Obviously, the temp sensor could go down as well. But it's always worth just checking that wiring first. And I'll put, say, if I find a wiring diagram, I'll put a picture of the diagram up as well. And if you want to check out any of the tools used or anything like that, I'll put links to them all in the description below. Well, yeah, I hope the video helped. If it did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.